exactly right. Right. So you know, if 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 you're talking to a, a pacemaker assembly man or an airline pilot, they don't try stuff. They don't say, "I wonder what happens if I do this." Right. And we're really glad that they yeah. don't do that because the cost of failing is greater than the cost of discovering what works and what doesn't. Right. But almost no one I know builds pacemakers, and I don't know any airline pilots. Most of us now live in a world where the kind of failure I'm talking about isn't fatal at all. Right. That if you post a blog post and it doesn't resonate with people, post another one tomorrow. Yeah. If you tweet something and no one retweets it, tweet again in an hour. That if you're just obsessed with always doing what everyone else is doing because you're afraid of someone saying, you failed, then you're in really big trouble. Right. A lot of people watching this are small business owners, they're entrepreneurs, or they're working for the man and they've got something in the back of their mind that they want to try. What's your message to them about jumping out there, taking a risk? Well, I think we got to first decide uh, about definitions here. A freelancer is someone who gets paid for working, right? That uh, a graphic designer might be a freelancer. That means the more you work, the more you get paid. An entrepreneur gets paid while they sleep. They build a business bigger than themselves. And she gets paid even when she's not there. And she uses someone else's money to get big. When freelancers act like entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs act like freelancers, chaos ensues. It's not a good idea. Yeah. And if you have a job with a boss, you need to think about whether your boss is asking you to do a set of tasks. Because if, if your boss is, they're going to try to find someone cheaper than you to do them, which is not good. Right. Or is your boss asking you to solve interesting problems? And if that's the case, now you have your work cut out for you. So what I would say to people in all three categories is take appropriate risks. And by appropriate risks, I mean risks that keep you in the game even if you fail. Figuring out how you can be in an industry or how you can be in a space or how you can try things out. You know, here's a simple example that has nothing to do with starting a new business. Let's say you always have a look, an appearance, and a shtick when you're at cocktail parties. Well, go buy a ticket to some charity gala where you don't know anyone. Wear a completely different outfit. Try a completely different shtick and see what happens. Yeah, there's no risk in that, right? Right. What's the worst that'll happen? You're not going to end up in the newspaper. Right. And you're going to discover, oh, when I look people in the eye, they're nicer to me. And I was afraid to do that in my hometown, but I discovered it here, and now I can go try it over there. It's like public speaking. No one ever died given a speech, but so many people are afraid of it. What's the downside? Right. right? And yet the people who tend to do it often discover things about themselves.